Oh, you too, Miss William. I was sitting on a log, semi hunting. Not in the middle of the day, I'm just out away from camp. Sitting out here in the middle of a pin oak flat. Thinking maybe a squirrel might come through. <laughs> but I really don't have any high hopes on it. You stir in the morning. But uh, anyway, sitting here wheedling on the steep. Thinking about the uh, conversation I have with somebody on a Facebook forum uh, a few days ago, and uh, there was a somebody had requested this, some more information about something, and I sent them a video of it. And some guy chimed in and said, "I stopped watching the moment I saw him whittling toward it or carving toward itself." Well, um, <laughs> again, it's, I, I just, I, I don't understand people, but anyway, if you watch a lot of the, um, the old carvers, the Swedish carvers and, and the, uh, Morris Kohansky is another one that does it quite a bit, um, You'll find that they will they will take something and they will they will take the knife and they will carve toward themselves quite a bit. And I've heard some so-called knife experts say never carve, carve toward yourself as well. Well, I don't I don't abide by that. Um, Morris Kahansky doesn't abide by that. The Swedish carvers don't abide by that. Anybody that used a knife extensively you'll find that they carve toward themselves, but they do it safely. And instead of us saying, never do this, never do that, why don't we teach people the safe way of doing things? What about that? Um, because inevitably, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you have to carve toward yourself. It just It's going to be one of those things that, that happens. I mean, when you're carving axes or axe handles, it's easier to carve toward yourself because you can see how the edge is biting the wood. If you're carving away, you can't see how that edge is biting the wood. But carving toward yourself, you can gauge the angle of the blade and understand how it's carving the wood. If you want to take a little bit of wood or you want to take a whole lot. That's why you carve toward yourself. If you're carving, actually carving, an axe handle, a tool handle, anything like that, then the best way to do that is carve toward yourself because you can you can see the edge of the knife, how it bites into the wood, and you can judge the angle that you're tilting the knife by watching that, that edge. Okay, so now we've established why you should carve toward yourself and why you may need to carve toward yourself. Draw knives is the same thing. When, you draw, uh, when you're using a draw knife, then you're carving toward yourself. So, in other words, or, so we've, we've established that, that inevitably if you're carving something long enough, you're going to carve toward yourself or have to carve toward yourself. Or it would be the optimal thing to do is to carve toward yourself. So, let's do it safely. I firmly believe that blade control is the key to safety on everything you do. If you're carving in any situation, you want to stop. Okay, say so you're having to carve toward your finger. You, what you want to do is you want to carve yourself a stop. You got to stop there. So now, when you carve, there's something that's going to stop that blade from slipping into your hand. Now, if you put enough pressure on it, it don't matter how many stops you have, the blade is still going to come into you. So that's another thing that you have to learn. And the only way to learn how much pressure to apply to a knife is to get out and whittle on a stick. That's the only way you're going to learn that. You have to practice, 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 practice. So, if you're, if you're carving a handle and you have to carve toward yourself, then you have to establish a stop. And the best thing to stop is this part here. I mean, that is, that is the best stop that, that, that you have. And your arm. So you angle the knife away from you and you use that arm as a stop. So as you get closer to you, then you're hitting up against your chest. You're not letting the blade hit you. 
Okay, you're using your arm as a stop. So there is no way that that blade can get into you. Morris Kohansky had mentioned that in a video at one time. He said that, that out of all of his years teaching wilderness skills, he has never seen anybody cut themselves carving toward themselves in this manner. He's never seen it happen. Um, so I will defer to Morris Kahansky about that. I've, I've never cut myself that way, and I've, I've been carving whittling on things like this my whole life. And I'm over 50 years old, so for a long time, I've never cut myself like that. So no matter how you're cutting or using a knife, you always want to make sure that you have a stop. And that's all part of, part of blade control. What I'm talking about when I say blade control, you want something to control that blade. Either a stop, which is a notch, something that's going to block the blade from getting into you, uh, having your hand close to where you're carving, applying the correct pressure, all that goes into blade control. And the only way to learn that is to get out and whittle on the stick. <laughs> okay? So, anyway, I hope, I hope this helps you. And don't, don't believe everybody that's so-called expert that says don't. Because most of the times when they say don't, it's because they can't do it themselves. All right? Just because they say don't don't mean it ain't something you can do. You just got to learn how to do it. And do it safely. But carving toward yourself, folks, is the best and the most control that you're going to have on a knife as far as blade control and taking off material from the stick. Okay? Because you can see the edge and you can see how much material you're taking off and you can judge the angle that you have the knife by that. So you start to dig in too much, so you change the angle. So you can get those fine curls like that, or you can start hogging off more material, but you can see that by the angle and how the edge is biting into the wood. If you're carving away from yourself, you can't see that. You can't, you can't judge that. Okay? So, <clears throat> something to think about. And stop telling people don't. Okay? So just because somebody says you can't do that, and interrupt the man that's doing it. <laughs> I got a video on that somewhere. <laughs> don't tell me I can't do something and interrupt me while I'm doing it. <laughs> You see there, when, you, when you're doing that, you, you have a stop as well. Because the, the handle is hitting you in the palm of your hand before the blade does. There. So once again, you're whittling toward yourself. You're whittling toward here, but you have a stop. Okay, food for thought. <clears throat> Think about it. Go watch some videos of, of, of some of the antique videos of, of Swedish carvers. Especially there's an old guy carving an axe handle. And, uh, I mean, those guys are phenomenal. They really are. So, I would, I would tend to believe somebody who's been carving their whole life on how to handle a knife and, and watch how they do it before I would really listen to some of the so-called experts today. Alright? Because there is no experts. None whatsoever. I don't care who they are. Even Ray Mears, somebody, they called him an expert one time, made him mad. And um, he said, there are no experts. And if anybody ever came close to being an expert, it would be Ray Mears. But he has enough sense to know that there are no experts. Because you think about what the knowledge that even your grandparents knew 
on how to survive and how to live off the land, how to use tools, and things like that. And there is nobody today that even comes close. None of us do. So there are no experts. All right, <laughs> get off my soapbox. Go back to whittling on stick. You guys get out in the backyard. You got to whittle on a stick to learn this stuff. I mean, you can list, watch all the videos you want to and get some tips and tricks and things like that. But until you put your hand on a knife and wheedle on a stick, it doesn't mean a thing. Be sure, if you do, to take plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. Because you're going to need both. <laughs> we'll catch you again soon. Bye.